Welcome to the YWAM Kansas City Podcast. We're here to activate our generation into missions and bring inspiration to live like Jesus in everyday life. All right, welcome back. Today I'm with Lindsay Rowan, and she is the leader of a media team. And we love having her on podcasts. She always brings the fire, so we have her back yet again. And today we're going to be talking about the subject of justice and compassion. Yes. And in our modern culture today, even real time, this year, 2020, Mm -hmm. it's an extremely important subject. And we want to be ones that really talk about how Jesus, he is. He's deeply concerned about people. Yes. He's deeply concerned about making wrong things right. And in that process, um, Lindsay's, she actually leads our Justice and Compassion Focus DTS here on our campus and has a deep well in this category. So Lindsay, I'm just here to learn from you (laughs) and our audiences as well. And I'm just here to pull out all the stuff that you've already been carrying and you've been Mm. leading our Justice Justice and Compassion Focus for- Three or four years. Three or four years, okay. So you're like four years ahead of us in this subject. And um, so we want to pull stuff out of you okay. in this interview. So I'm just going to lean on you, ask you a few questions, and then wherever we go, we go. It'd be great. Okay. So um, I'll start off with this question um, just to, to crack into it a little bit. Um, in in these categories of, of justice and compassion, I'll hit on right. the compassion first here. What does it mean to carry a heart of compassion around these subjects? I'll just start there. Yeah. Wow. Easy question. Yeah, easy. Just, <laughs> you can just give us three bullet points, just real, you know, succinct. Yes. <laughs> okay, what does it mean to carry compassion? Yeah, and she, carry Jesus' heart, basically. Man, it just means to be, like, gutted about people. I think that's what I've learned. And so often, I tend to... I tended to stray away from actually wanting to let my heart be connected to the struggle or to somebody's plight and just wanting to see action. But when you look through scriptures, especially when you look at the life of Jesus, you see that he was actually so many verses reference that he was moved to compassion. Hmm. And because of his compassion, he did something. Hmm. And so I just started looking at that and just seeing like, okay, there's a place in my heart that I actually have to let people's Um, whether it be infirmities or their struggles or poverty, like I have to let that affect my heart to a place where it grips me. Mm. It makes me uncomfortable. It disturbs my sleep. (laughs) Like Mm. it just, it just utterly shakes me where I need to respond. Mm. And I want to do any act of justice out of that place of like, I've been gripped. Mm. So I think that's why even intercession is so powerful because it really connects our heart Mm -hmm. to the fathers Mm -hmm. in those areas. But Yeah, I think being able to walk around with compassion in the heart of Jesus really Mm -hmm. means like I'm actually just going to walk around and just feel and I'm going to love and Mm. I'm going to put my heart on my sleeve. And even when you reject me, I'm going to keep loving you. And even when you say mean things about me, Mm. I'm going to keep loving you. Mm. And we saw that that was Jesus. Mm. And so when we take our example from his life, I think it just means just walking around. <laughs> just just loving go on the walks. People. Yeah, just, just yeah. walk. <laughs> yeah. It's just loving people right. with everything. And I think we say it often, like, I want to mm-hmm. love well. Yeah, totally. And I, like, love everyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, to an extent. Right. <laughs> but what does it mean to love people that, mm-hmm. you know, it says that are your enemies or, like, right. those people that are not kind to you? Right. And I think even in the tension of today's society, mm-hmm. we're finding that even some of our churches loving well is hard. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. No, I think exactly what you're saying. I think to quote love well, some of these phrases we throw around so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just love love them. That you know, that's thing. But I feel like depending on your definition, right? Like the world's definition, love well is like, hey, the people that really like you, you can love them back. Right. Then you go Jesus' definition, <laughs> right? And he's like, hey, by the way, yeah, those who love you. It's like, even the pagans do that. That's like the phrase he uses. And he goes, but actually, you should even love your enemies to that extent. Yes. And I don't know. It's just like, yeah, so what is, yeah, Jesus' standard in terms of compassion and loving well should be our standard. Yes, yes. (sighs) Thank you, Lord. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, I'll ask a question on that. So in in that, all right, you got so many, uh, such a swirl of... um, pain, hurt, emotion, real issues. Um, 
you've got all this. And there's so many different categories, too. There's obviously ones with the, the race happening right now. Yes, right. Right. And then you have other categories is just the compassion as well. But in the midst of all of that, how do we keep our heart in a place that's actually tender? Yeah. Right. To where we can feel what God feels towards people, can see what God sees, can be moved to compassion. What does it mean to even keep our heart in a place where we can actually be tender in this? I, and I'm talking about from a believer's perspective. Yeah, from yeah. a believer's perspective, I think one of the most important things that I've found is like vulnerability mm-hmm. really ties into this place for me. So I have to be willing to engage with someone on in their pain. Mm. And that means I have to make myself vulnerable to them, mm-hmm. with them, in, in that area with them. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about like issues with the race, things happening mm-hmm. and things like that, I think... I think Jesus would sit with some of our brothers and sisters and listen Mm -hmm. and be there and hug and mourn and grieve. And, you know, I think that is where we find the compassion Mm -hmm. act, Mm -hmm. Um, not to be without justice and some things like that. But I think what we often tend to go to is just strong sway to um, justice acts and reform. Mm -hmm. And like, this has to be like Mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. And it's one sided. And I think the beauty of the Lord is that he functions in the and. And I've learned Mm -hmm. a lot about that is like, I can't do acts of justice without compassion. Mm -hmm. And so when I see all the pain and the suffering, Mm -hmm. the way that I can most engage my heart Mm -hmm. is to really ask the Lord how he sees that person. Mm -hmm. How do you see the traffic victim? And how do you see the trafficker? Mm -hmm. And how do you see the white supremacist? And how Mm -hmm. do you see this person? And Mm -hmm. I I need to know how you feel about Mm -hmm. every person in this situation Mm -hmm. so that when I speak to them if I encounter them I'm not coming out of my own like personal struggle or Mm -hmm. plight or anything but I am speaking the word of God over them and to them and aligning my heart with truth Mm -hmm. and it's so easy to get swayed in opinions and different things Mm -hmm. um and just different viewpoints and that you have your own storyline mm-hmm. and you're like, yes, I identify with that. Right. It ain't ever been right. right? right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and then you're just like, ah, hold up. Right. I'm a new creation. I've been made new. And in my newness, I have to see you mm-hmm. differently. And I cannot tag you on with all the past trauma, hurt and pain. Because mm-hmm. if I see you through that filter, I'm not seeing you like Jesus. Mm, that's good. And it's so hard which I think is why compassion is usually mm. either, you know, just it's one or the other. We don't mm. often see both. Mm-hmm. And it's because it's hard. Right. It's hard. It's uncomfortable. It's like gritty and like, mm. ah, I don't like this. And right. I don't like that you were mean right. Right. <laughs> at all. Right. <laughs> and that was wrong. But I still want you to end up in heaven. And mm-hmm. why do I want that? Because the Lord says he wishes that none would perish. Mm. And so if I'm aligning with the Lord in that place, I need to fight for your salvation. Mm. And that that place alone like wrecks me every time Mm. is that every person I come encounter with if they're not following the Lord I'm fighting for Mm. I want to win my brother and my sister and it's so humbling and hard because you're like we don't see eye to Mm. eye (laughs) we are not agreeing on this topic at all Mm -hmm. but I'm still supposed to love you and Mm -hmm. I'm still supposed to win you and at the end of this I want you to feel like you were closer to Jesus rather than with my anger or mm-hmm. with my point of view mm-hmm. or opinion like no it's so good and I think you're and you're touching on you're touching on a bunch of good things but one thing I think is I'll just speak honestly when I'm on like a social media platform or something I yeah. scroll for T minus 30 seconds right <laughs> not yeah. even very long and you're seeing opinions here and opinions there and all over the place in about 30 seconds, I can already feel myself wanting to take on someone else's offense, right? Right. right. And I realize when I l- even let just a tinge of that in, I'm actually, my heart becomes less tender. Yes. I start growing callous. I, I start to lose the, just the sensitivity to, sensitivity to God's spirit. Mm-hmm. And the scripture, as you've been talking, I'm thinking of is Matthew 9, mm-hmm. where Jesus, when he looks out on the crowds, he sees them as helpless and harassed like sheep without a shepherd. Yeah. And from that place, he then ministers, heals, prays, does all those different things. And I think at this time, we need the body of Christ believers. And this, this is what you're saying 
to to really step up, see what Jesus sees, yeah, and be moved to with compassion to then meet individual people's needs and yes. um and I think some people are doing this well yes but I think also I would say the majority I'll just go with the majority um I think we're 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 not nailing it yeah <laughs> and it's not that it's gonna be perfect process but I feel like there's just so much swirl around this and we've talked about this it's like gosh like how we how you know let's hit the heart of Jesus in it as we move forward, and I think, man, it's such a, and I'm just repeating what you're saying, basically, <laughs> but I don't know if you have any thoughts you want to add to that. But Yeah, I mean, I'm just agreeing with you yeah, again. Yeah, so. yeah, right, yeah, so, so. We have to leave our hearts, and I think it's hard, and I know that cliche, like, term is like unoffendable heart, Right. but I think even in the last few months and seeing everything that's happened, mm-hmm. it is like, my heart has a tendency to rage Mm. and it is wicked and it is crazy Mm. and so when i'm seeing some of these injustices i'm just like ah right (laughs) what do you mean what how why Mm -hmm. lord where are you like Mm -hmm. what's happening and Mm -hmm. then i have to immediately disengage from social media Mm. and like just get in front of the lord open my word and like find him Mm -hmm. what do you say about Mm -hmm. social injustice lord Mm -hmm. what do you say about the poor and Mm -hmm. the widow and the orphan like i don't get this i don't get this and really having that dialogue with the Mm -hmm. lord finding um finding my place in him Mm -hmm. and what he speaks about that Mm -hmm. allows me to like have conversations with people Mm -hmm. and even if we don't end up at the same place be Mm -hmm. okay and Mm -hmm. like really something that's helped me at the end is just being like I have to, I want to end with winning my brother. Mm -hmm. And if our discussion leads Mm -hmm. to you being further away from the Lord, then I was not successful. Mm -hmm. And if I did not even echo anything, like, you know, in 1 Corinthians, Mm -hmm. there's like love without, like you're just a clanging symbol. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be a clanging symbol. It's Mm -hmm. so easy to be a clanging symbol right Mm -hmm. now. Lord, teach me to be quiet. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That Mm -hmm. is like, I'm like, oh, shut me up. Right. And let me listen. Lord, let my love be patient. Mm-hmm. Let it be kind. Oh, I just stopped there because I haven't even got patient or kind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, let my love be patient. Let it be kind. Lord, oh, I'm talking to somebody that is just saying something crazy mm-hmm. or I just saw something crazy. Mm-hmm. Lord, help me be patient. Mm-hmm. Where are you in the midst of this? Mm-hmm. What are you saying about this? Mm-hmm. How do you want me to respond? Mm-hmm. And I think that's the thing that um, a lot of people struggle with because overall, I would say people feel like the church is either silent mm-hmm. or picks up a whole different side of things, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I've been really fighting with that because I've been like, Lord, I don't want to align with a political a party or a gender mm-hmm. or anything. Mm-hmm. Like I need to be lined up with you. Mm-hmm. And everything that I say and do has to be reflective mm-hmm. of you. But then in that place, what are you calling me to do? What is the Mm -hmm. justice act? Or how do I respond to these things going on? Mm -hmm. Is it signing a petition? Mm -hmm. Is it going out to a protest? Like, is it these things? Mm -hmm. And if the Lord's not given me permission to do them, Mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, I'm not silent or inactive. I'm continuously engaging with Mm -hmm. him in the process. But I've just really found that I first have to actually engage my heart more than my emotions Mm -hmm. in the struggle and what people are going through Mm. so that when i'm in the midst of anything that that's where i'm contending Mm -hmm. for breakthrough from Mm -hmm. that's good i want to go back to one of the things you just said um the the late ravi zacharias who just passed away just recently right one thing he would always say is behind every question there's a questioner Mm -hmm. and i would say that in a different way behind every conversation you have with somebody mm-hmm. whether it's social media or in person and i would recommend as many in person as possible yes. <laughs> right the <laughs> no keyboard worries yeah, yeah, yeah keyboard <laughs> worries yeah so but behind that conversation is a real person yes and like you're saying we don't want to just win the argument we want to win the person yes and i think we do we have on a larger scale, truth is important, obviously, and yes. we want to win. We want to win the battle for truth in the public arena, obviously. But I think we have so many people trying to just win the argument, especially if the category is a, um, 
I don't know, uh, uh, Jesus is an uber clear in the category. Yeah. It's one of the peripheral things or it's a secondary thing. It's not like salvation or, you know, there's some core things obviously that are very important, but but like on f- even fringe stuff, I feel like people can just be at each other mm-hmm. and you actually lose the brother. Yes. And in the process of losing the, like in the process of winning the argument, you actually lose the person. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know if you have any additional thoughts on that on... M- if I'm about to, if I'm having conversation with people and we don't see eye to eye in certain things, um, in any category, um, how do I, how do I win my brother? I guess yeah. that's my question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna go off on a quick story tangent, yeah, yeah. really quickly. Yeah. So you know, Dolan's white. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I am not. Yeah, yeah. If we're white reason, redhead. If white redhead, my little ginger. I'm, I'm excited for your kids. I just want yeah. to throw it out there right now. I'm excited too. Simone is. She says it every once in a while. <laughs> my wife is named Simone. Every once in a while she'd be like, I'm really excited for their kids. I'm yeah. Like, it's going to be great. We're yeah. all waiting. Continue. But okay, so he and I have completely different worldviews. Mm-hmm completely Mm -hmm. and he's a man i'm a woman black white like like let's just keep adding up the differences and so we found that some of the stuff that was going on we were addressing completely from our worldviews Mm -hmm. and our life experiences Mm -hmm. and so as a white guy he had never experienced some of the stuff that i had gone through or even my brother or family members Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so he had no idea how to engage with me in it Mm -hmm. and so in the beginning we were just having arguments like whoosh whoosh and i was like Mm -hmm. ah (laughs) this Mm -hmm. can't no i what Mm -hmm. this is not this is not gonna work this is Mm -hmm. not how it's gonna fly and so we had to get to a place where we sat down and mm-hmm. we talked to Jesus mm-hmm. and we asked the Lord, like, how do we do this in our marriage? Mm-hmm. Because we're always going to have a different point of view, mm-hmm. always. Mm-hmm. And really finding at that place, it was like, I love you. Mm-hmm. Not only because you're my husband, mm-hmm. but because- I have to. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a brother in Christ, right. you're a brother. And I don't want this to just, dis- bring disunity Mm -hmm. and then we started seeing like oh these conversations not even just amongst us but between friends Mm -hmm. was bringing disunity and i was like oh Mm -hmm. but the promise is when the body is united that there's a blessing so then you just see like oh there's a there's a theme here Mm -hmm. so i think the first thing that we notice and what i would encourage people to Mm -hmm. say is like is your conversation bringing life or death or Mm. like causing disunity right because if you are leaving it where you're not coming together you don't feel good afterwards that there's probably a seed of the enemy that was planted Mm -hmm. um and i think you have to take people and just believe the best about them Mm -hmm. um i really i wish dolan was here because we would just talk about just i know his heart and i know Mm -hmm. who he is Mm -hmm. and it wasn't until um I don't know. He had this moment with the Lord and he's just like, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because all of a sudden he had an outer body and he experienced life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like anything else. (laughs) It was just like he had to get to a place where he was with the Lord Mm -hmm. and having the conversation from like right there, intervention. And Mm -hmm. now when we have discussions about a lot of the stuff going on, we're able to first come together in the Lord. Mm-hmm. What does he say about that? What, okay, yeah, we like each other. Yeah. We want to end up on the same page. Yeah, yeah, we establish that. Yeah, like right our goal day. is to like, we're going to be <laughs> friends after this. Right, right. I'm not going to bed angry. You're not going to bed angry. Mm-hmm. And then from that going on. So I think I would take those same principles into friendships with others. Mm-hmm. It's like, I want to be friends with you at the end of this. Mm-hmm. Unless you're speaking crazy and mm-hmm. you're outside of like everything, right. then maybe we shouldn't be friends. Yeah, but really, yeah. right. I should have already done that filtering. Right. So <laughs> yeah. I want to be your friend after mm-hmm. this. I respect you and I honor you. Mm-hmm. And I think that helps with conversations completely because mm-hmm. it already dismantles this like, I need to let you know right. kind yeah, of yeah. attitude. Right. Right. And you're just like, hey, let's just talk. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, okay. No, I don't see it like that. But you know what I mean? Like your dialogue's in a completely different place. Mm -hmm. And I know enter conversations where I feel like I have to defend my point of Mm -hmm. view because those are just aggressive and combative all the time. And they're usually like in an emotion too. Mm -hmm. There's something wrapped around it. So you're crying and you're like, why am I crying? Because then you start saying things (laughs) you regret. And you're like, reverse. I can't take any of this out. Yeah. Yeah, So (laughs) trying to grab your words. Yeah. As they come out. Yeah. Engage with like, I want to be your friend. Mm -hmm. I I honor you. I respect you. 
and I am going to win you in this conversation. Not to my side, not to my point of view, but I want to win you in Christ. Come on, so good. So that's stuff that I've learned, and that's just even more so in within my marriage because, yeah, I didn't know that we were different. You know you're different, but you don't know you're yeah. different. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm continually <laughs> knowing, yeah, in different areas. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, wait, what? Yeah. So I. this is so good. Mm-hmm. Like, this conversation these type of conversations of, I think people just need to learn how to talk. Yes. Uh, right, with each other and, and oh wow, we don't disagree. Okay, do you agree? And this is with believers. So I'd say unbelievers and believers, two different conversations anyways. Yes. But believers are, okay, we believe Jesus died, rose from the grave <laughs> and is our Lord and Savior. Okay, great, right? we're good, <laughs> all right. And you know, and then we come to some of these other areas where there's different experiences, there's different ways it plays out in society, there's different, whatever, and there's a hundred categories that could be. Mm-hmm. Um, how, you know, having humility in those conversations and how do you even just talk, um, I think is massively needed right now. So what yes. you're saying I think is hugely important, even in the category of marriage, right? Yes. My wife always is telling me, she's like, I wanna feel like we're on the same team when yes. we're talking. And I and I'll get into a mode where I'm like I, I want to be right, but right, but <laughs> yeah. but in the reality is I could be totally right and totally wrong with the right. wrong spirit or the wrong motive. Yes. And I'll just say one twenty second thing on I think if we're talking to unbelievers, it's then even a whole nother conversation, especially on a personal level. Right. Like we, in my opinion, us debating and going back and forth, almost never ends up in someone being led to Jesus. Right. I'll just say that. It's probably happened somewhere, yeah. right? And it's probably, I'd say it's more the exception than the rule. The rule is really engaging with people on a heart level. What is God saying about this person? How do I share just the gospel with them and what Jesus has done for them? See them come into the kingdom Verse, hey, you shouldn't have voted for that political candidate or, <laughs> or whatever, you know what I mean? Like going to a, going to that And then you've just lost a friend and actually you've lost an opportunity to lead them to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So this is a a long way to say, um, I think we need more conversations like this. So I don't know if you have any last thoughts before we wrap up here. Um, I would say in this topic, when it comes to justice and compassion, or we see even like the trend of social justice Mm -hmm. and the uh, the opposite of like injustice Mm -hmm. is happening in our culture today, that we have to make sure that we align ourselves first with the word of God. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy easy to be swayed Mm -hmm. and it's so easy to pick up a fence for Mm -hmm. others and we have to be mindful of what we're letting in Mm -hmm. even in our heart even when it's in good motives Mm -hmm. right and i've found even when i've talked to like young girls if we're doing stuff and they're like oh this happened to me this trauma's happened to me this has happened to me sometimes if i'm not careful i can leave those conversations like hating men and I'm like oh they all suck yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> yeah, and it wasn't on. even me like it didn't happen to mm-hmm. me I'm sad that that was her experience mm-hmm. but I have really have to guard my heart against picking up other people's offense mm-hmm. not that I'm not gonna fight for them and not that I don't want to see them have freedom mm-hmm. but my heart has to remain like clean in that situation because otherwise I'm just doing it out of a vendetta. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that really roots me is like justice is the Lord's. Mm. And I want to see the Lord's justice reign in the Mm -hmm. earth more than I want to see a political party, Mm. more than I want to see different things happen. Like I need and want to be able to say on my last day that I saw the Lord's justice reign. And there's so many different facets of that, I Mm -hmm. think. But I think that we have to fight for the Lord's justice. Mm And so not to let your heart be swayed or to be heavied Mm -hmm. in the midst of the times that we're living in, Mm because they're crazy. They're legitimately crazy. Mm -hmm. But to really tap into Jesus, to Mm -hmm. know that he's good and he's faithful, he's got a plan, he will not leave us or forsake us, Mm -hmm. and fight from that place, fight for that truth, fight for that reality in all of your conversations, Mm -hmm. in every act of justice that you have, in every moment of compassion that you get to walk into, is that you know that Jesus is real. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for sharing with us, Lindsay. I think it's an awesome conversation, and I think people... Um, really enjoyed it and can glean a lot from it. So thanks guys for tuning in. Appreciate it. Have an awesome day. Look forward to the next podcast episode coming out soon. Yay. Thanks for tuning in to our YWAM Kansas City podcast. 
If you enjoyed listening, please subscribe, share, and leave a rating. If you are watching, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and be sure to turn on our post notifications to catch our podcasts as soon as they're released. We'll see you next time.